I think it's true that all but one of former Conservative treasurers who've given more than £3 million have been appointed to the House of Lords. Now, the, 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 the person who got a, a knighthood today might think of himself as a bit short-changed since he only got a knighthood. Now, uh, let's start with the surprise Easter's honours list, which was released overnight. The businessman, Mohammed Mansour, was, who gave £5 million to the Tories, but also is active in charity, has been awarded a knighthood uh, along with four Conservative MPs. The film director, uh, director of Oppenheimer, Christopher Nolan, and his wife and producer, Emma Thomas, are also received honours, uh, a knight and a damehood for them. Let's speak now to David Howarth, Professor of Law at the University of Cambridge, who recently contributed to a report for the Joseph Roundtree uh, Foundation and the Cobalt Trust on the honours system. Well, thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us, David Howard. I mean, first of all, this is not in the regular honours list uh, which we get at New Year and at the time of the monarch's birthday. So is there anything out of order in these awards in principle? Well, you do get these extra um, awards being made, but, but they're largely political ones. They're, they're, uh, the, the, the creation of new political periods and so on, they, they tend to be out of the normal sequence. So um, it is a bit odd to have this collection of awards, um, not at the New Year, not at the King's birthday. I have to say, we've got an odd situation here because we use the term honour, but when it comes to political honours, they're not really honours for achievement, are they? They're sort of Buggins' turn. Yeah, so I mean, that, that was uh, a point that we tried to make in our report, that um, uh, political honours... Um, are not judged on the same level of achievement as other honours. So, you know, to get a, a, an ordinary honour, you need to have done something fantastic. You know, got a gold medal in the Olympic Games, got an Oscar, got a Nobel Prize, or done something very important for the community locally. Uh, but these political honours seem to be just handed out for for basically doing um, people's ordinary jobs, just just you know, bumbling along as a backbench MP. So um, uh, that needs to be stopped. In fact, I, 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 what we recommended was that the Prime Minister should be taken out of the honour system altogether and that political honours should be just combined with public service and that the same level of uh, achievement should be required for um, politicians as for anybody else to get an honour. And it's got to be said, there is a very significant correlation, isn't there, between people who get peerages and knighthoods and who make donations to the major political parties. Yes, there is. Um, uh, I think it's true that all but one of former Conservative treasurers who've given more than £3 million have been appointed to the House of Lords. Now, the, 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 the person who got a, a knighthood today might think of himself as a bit short-changed since he only got a knighthood. Um, and there's academic work that shows that if you divide up appointments to the Lords between those who might have a you know, good excuse to be there, uh, 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 senior politicians from local and national government and, and look at their donations and then look at the donations of other people for whom there's no real excuse apart from uh, they've given money, you'll find vast, um, uh, uh, vastly larger donations from the second group than the former. So I think um, the evidence is there that the, the, the system basically is corrupt. I, I mean, corrupt's a strong word, but, but why would you say it's corrupt? Because um, just looked at objectively, um, people are finding their way into the legislature on the basis of having donated large amounts of money to the political parties. And all political parties are up to this, by the way. It's, it's, um, you, the Conservative case is a particular case, especially with, with Conservative treasurers, which is particularly notorious. Uh, but all political parties um, have been involved in the past. Now, in the case of a uh, man we now call Sir Mohammed Mansour, he served as a minister in the Egyptian government under Hosni Mubarak. We've also, of course, had the case of Lord Ledbedev. Is it permissible, or, or it's obviously permissible, but is it a good idea to give honours to people who have strong political connections to other countries? Well, there's an obvious risk there, isn't there? I mean, and and um, it's another reason to have independent scrutiny of these appointments, not only the, the honours, but I think even more the, the House of Lords uh, situation, where there should be um, independent vetting of all 
uh, House of Lords appointments. Um, there's already a committee, the whole that committee, but the ways around it doesn't apply to all appointments or the Prime Minister can just ignore their recommendations. And that needs to be put on a, on a statutory basis and made um, uh, fully effective so that these kind of risks can be taken into account. Um, it might be in particular cases that the, the risk is very low and the, the person um, um, you know, should be allowed to go forward. Um, but um, um, someone's going to make a judgment and it shouldn't be the prime minister. Uh, Professor, you're an eminent man, professor of law at the University of Cambridge. Uh, you've contributed to important reports. Would you ever accept an honour? Well, if I've done enough, um, I mean, the, the, the chances of me winning the Nobel Prize are very low um, and the chances of me winning an Olympic medal are zero. Um, but I, the, the, the honour system um, is, in, in principle, a good one. You, pe people need to be recognised for public service, for exceptional achievement, and it's good for um, um, the public to, to be able to appreciate what's been done in different fields. That's fine. Um but uh, th those standards, the standards of achievement necessary to get an honour, should be the same across all fields of activity. And politics shouldn't be an easier route to an honour than, say, athletics or uh, the stage and film or literature or science. Professor David Hart, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Now, a year ago today, the Wall Street Journal reporter and, of course, our colleague, Evan Gershvich, uh, was wrongly detained by Russia while he was doing his job as a reporter. He remains in custody there. He is the first American journalist in Russia since the Cold War to have been charged with espionage. No evidence has been produced against him, and Evan and his employers deny the charges, which carry up to a 20-year prison sentence. Well, we can now speak to one of Evan's colleagues at the journal, Stephen Callan. Uh, Stephen, thank you very much indeed for being with us. 